All right, all right, all right. Welcome to one more JJ podcast, MedTech Talks. Today, we're going to talk about how can we break barriers to unleash potential. Uh, for this very special podcast, we have two international guests that are going to talk with us about this topic. One is Larry Jones, our CIO and Global Vice President for JJ MedTech. Welcome, Larry. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's, it's awesome to be here. Excellent. And we also have here Danny Gomez, my dear friend and colleague at the leadership team of MedTech Latin, head of technology for all of our MedTech business in Latin. So welcome, Danny. Thank you, Fabricio. Very happy to be here with you and with Larry for this conversation. Thank you for the invite, for the invitation. No, excellent. Uh, since I was a children, I have heard that Brazil is the country of the future. And there is something that has been like keeping like that and not never become a reality for you know, the past more than 30 years. And one thing that I always reflected is that we have a huge potential as a country, but unfortunately we're not able so far to unleash the entire potential that we have. And one thing that I usually think is that one of the biggest ways we have in our lives is exactly potential. So this, this podcast is about that. And Larry always says that the, the personal life and the professional life goes together. And I think that you live it during your career, during your journey, that is amazing. And we'd like to, to hear a little bit from you. How was that journey? And how do you brought those barriers that really make what you, you did right? It's awesome, the position you are and the impact you have globally. Yeah, no, no, thanks for the question. And I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, potential in, in essence is, is energy, but wasted energy is not good. So wasted potential is also not good. And there's a lot of case studies where you see companies, individuals who people look forward to and say, oh, they have such great, great potential. But again, if they don't apply the energy to exercise that potential, it's 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 quite unfortunate. For me, I, I really have to give everything for who I am, what I am to to my parents and, and my grandmother. They were very <laughs> they were very pointed about being the best person you can be, and that doesn't necessarily mean title. But whatever you choose to be, whatever you want to be, you know, drive toward it with a great passion. Be very committed. Um, you know, to some degree, even be hard on yourself more than anyone else. Be your, your worst critic um, and, and be the toughest judge of yourself. And I think for me, there have been barriers. Look, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you often, whether it was in school or in sports or even in corporate America, being in a room where you're the only person that looks like you, um, also being tall, being incredibly introverted, there's a lot of excuses on why you couldn't, shouldn't make it or do it. But then those barriers are self-inflicted. So you have to challenge yourself, push yourself to step outside yourself and be as good as you can be, whether that's a CIO, whether that's a, a top chef, whether that's um, just being an everyday person. Um, I really think it's about removing your own internal barriers versus the ones that society and perhaps even your mind plays tricks on you on, are these barriers really real? And some are, um, but uh, but I believe your inward potential, using that energy will, will get you as far as you can go. No, that, that, that's amazing, the, these reflections that you bring. And it's true, there is barriers that are self-inflicted. There are barriers that are structural. And the ones that are self-inflicted is on us to take, remove. And the ones that are structural is in us as a leaders to promote a better society. So it's a super insight for you to bring. And Danny, now moving to your story, right? You are an inspiring female leader here in j, &J that has really created a huge impact, make all of us move to Agile Weasel of Work. It's not a new model. You are the one to blame on that. And tell a little bit how your story happens from Rio de Janeiro to now live in the U.S. and live in this entire region? Oh, thank you, Fabricio. I think I was very fortunate to 
have a lot of, you know, people that inspired and mentored and coached me throughout my career. But um, I started my career over 25 years ago. I started very young, so no, no issues there. But it was like a long time ago. And although I was lucky enough to find a workplace where you, you could see more women mm. leaders, right? And that was important because representation is important. Look that someone got there and try to find your way to get there, right? It's, it's easier when you have an example, someone that you can um, aspire to, um, to, you know, to learn and to get to the same position. But I didn't see a lot of those examples in technology coming from several companies, startups, digital companies, uh, but also more traditional companies. And when I got to j, &J I actually didn't see female leaders in the Latin region. I remember that we were over 200 employees at that point, and we had quite, you know, a few leaders, directors, senior directors, vice presidents, and not one woman. But then globally, we had a CIO that was a woman, and actually in the sector I was working with consumer, the global CIO was also a woman. So I looked at that and I saw like hope, okay, that is something that we can do here, but in the region, it's not looking good, not only for me as a leader, but for the young generation that I see coming into this work environment. So we learned at that, that time that um, in the US, they had this initiative, w WLI, Women Leadership Initiative, and they were doing great things in the US to help foster women leadership. Specifically in technology, they had a chapter, and I tried to see how I could connect with them and learn from what they do, they were doing and how we could bring that to technology in, in the Latin region. And that was uh, what we did. So we got together, not only me, other uh, women um, leaders, now managers, senior managers in the region. And we started talking to the leadership here. We got their support to bring that initiative. And we worked on things such as how we could educate both the leadership, but also the individuals, the women that we had in the technology um, organization, how we could promote exposure, um, how we could put them on the table where the leadership team was having important discussions and they could be parts of that. And well, I started that initiative together with um, um, other leaders in the region, and I am very proud to say that was over maybe 10 years ago, that today in the Latin American organization, when you look at the population, 40 years, uh, directors and above, uh, over 40% uh, are women. So that was the impact that it started, uh, you know, a few years ago. So I think that the two messages there are Change takes time, it's not going to be overnight, but it also takes action. Change doesn't occur by chance. You need to put the effort, you need to do the work, but if you are consistent, and doesn't matter your level, I think wherever you are, if you are an individual leader, if you lead a small team, if you are a leader in a big organization, you can always uh, bring impact, right? And help uh, promote change. That, 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 those are excellent points. We need to have action, right? Not having an intention only is enough. You need to have the intention, but you need to have action. And going back to the structural uh, uh, barriers that were created, something that we learned uh, was like a blind spot for us is that uh, once you create some uh, entry level positions to attract high talent, we were like say, ah, oh, we want the best of the best. So we first say, oh, we want someone who is fluent in English. Then we want someone who is fluent in Spanish. We want someone who went to the best schools. We want someone who went abroad and had experience to visit multiple countries. And when we were going in that direction, what we were doing is that we created more barriers for diversity. And so at some point, point we realize and have that aha moment is on, a, on the contrary. We want the best talent, bring it in, and then we teach them English, we teach them Spanish, we teach them whatever, because many times the best talents 
they uh, have the soft skills within, they have the passion in their eyes. And that is, so one thing that nowadays we remove all those structural barriers in our entry levels, uh, we are reaching uh, all talents uh, everywhere. And, and something that I love to say is that I value as much someone who has the experience to live abroad as someone who has the experience to take a bus every day, two hours. And sometimes the person who go abroad never took a bus and doesn't know uh, exactly how, how, how life is. But going to that point, Larry, uh, I know you are a big, big sponsoring champion for many uh, affinity groups, both in our region and also for uh, African-Americans. Uh, can you share a little bit this role that is obviously complementary to your big, big shoes on leading technology globally for MedTech, but uh, how is your other role, how important it is, and how you help us to remove those barriers and really give you opportunity to do the amazing talents that are everywhere? Uh, it's, it's, it's been an incredible honor to, to even engage and participate, participate let alone lead um, in part of some of the work I'm doing with ERGs. Um, for, for example, we developed a IT team of African Americans across all of North America, not because we wanted to be an ERG, but what we realized was most of them had actually been at the same level for more than a decade, that they weren't getting opportunities to grow, to be seen, and were quite frankly, on a professional level, invisible. And I thought it was ridiculous for me to be as fortunate as I am to not engage and figure out how to solve that problem. Not by myself, of course, but with them from a, a grounds up uh, perspective. And what happened was actually quite magical. The group not only started to lean in together, we developed a community where we coached each other. Um, we developed this community where, you know, I can absolutely say we actually love each other and a sense of we identify with some of the challenges we have both professionally and personally. Um, most of the folks on the team are the primary financial owners of their families and their generations. So there's a, there's a heavy burden that comes with that. Um, but we just learned how they developed and really began to work together to figure out some, some opportunities. But I think that's, that's true for a lot. And, you know, one thing I want to do is continue to live by the, not just a cradle, but my own personal cradle. I have the privilege of working with Donnie but I also have two other female leaders that are CIOs for the other regions as well, um, for North America, for EMEA. So it's one thing to be a part of these ERGs, but it's another thing to actually practice what you do. And, you know, I'm super proud to be a part of a team that is incredibly diverse. Um, and, you know, often we hear is, is there really magic in a the diversity? There really is. We, we have a great team. We don't always agree, which is fine, but we respect when we disagree. But we learn from each other. I've learned from Donnie. I've learned from almost every, if not every, member of my team. Um, but I think it's uber important for us because someone gave me a chance. Um, someone gives all of us an opportunity and a chance. And sometimes all it takes is that one person. And so... I think my opportunity to give back is, you know, to help others give others a chance that they might be invisible today, but they might be the next best leader tomorrow. Um, all they need is a chance. Now, uh, when you talk about the word invisible, I think is a very, very strong word. Mm -hmm. And I have heard multiple times that as much as engage more and more in the DNI and the ERGs, we, we hear about that, how, how some groups feel invisible. And all they want is, is a chance. And uh, and Danny, uh, how do you think that we as a leaders can do to help to to put light on those talents so they don't feel invisible anymore? And also, how have yourself done as a female leader in IT to find uh, the spot that brought you where you are nowadays? No, great question. I think we all have the responsibility to make sure we create an environment where it's safe for, first for people to bring their authentic self to the workplace. We don't have a separated lives. 
right? At some point we thought we had, right? But we learned, <laughs> hopefully, that it, you have one life. It's personal, it's professional, so you cannot live who you are at home and bring a different persona to the workplace. So we need to make sure people in our teams, um, they feel they can bring their whole self to the workplace, right? Um, they needed to feel safe to be vocal, right? And that is really, really wealth in what they can bring to the table because they are the ones that are closer to where things are happening. They are closer to the work. So if they feel safe to bring concerns, issues, uh, but also to say where we are doing great, right? Because so, so that's what we need to enable as leaders, that environment where people feel like they can, be them, they, they can be in themselves, they can be focal about what they see, what they feel. Um, and I think if you have that environment, people, they will thrive. They will find their way and they will thrive. But it's also important to make sure they have the coach they need, the mentorship they need, right? Um, the opportunities, the exposure they need. So you need to be mindful. So that's what I try to do. Uh, when we are discussing an initiative, I always think who could um, take more advantage of working this initiative and develop something that they need to develop. And sometimes it's that shy person that needs to develop the communication skills, right? And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, I think it's going to be really difficult for you, but you are going to get on the other side a lot stronger and you know more prepared for whatever it's your you know next step it might be the next position but might be an opportunity in a different area so how you help challenges so also people know um that their leaders see them right and they they have in that leader a partnership to develop themselves because i really believe that it, it is a, a partnership right the individual needs to put the effort they need to look for what they need to develop but the leadership with the experience we have, because we have been there, we can help, right, to provide the other sides um, of that. So, yes, I think that's what I try to do uh, with my team. And to be quite honest, even outside my team, so I lead the technology organization, but I try to do this across because I think you can always reach out and help people. Doesn't matter where in the organization they are, right? Um, I feel like it's my mission as well. Yeah, now, it's the greatest point you, you brought about the persona, that if you go back like 10 years ago, it was all about executive presence. So pretty much you have a company trying to make you someone they were not, so you are the perfect person. And thanks God we evolve and you have here more and more about being your authentic self. And obviously your authentic self Hopefully, he's an, a nice person that people want to be around. <laughs> yes, but uh, it's all about now less about his active presence and more about being a genuine, authentic one who inspires people for who they are, that feels good, that has a psychological safety. Uh, and this changes everything. Uh, 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 Larry, uh, thoughts about the psychological safety, how it has changed, the what you need to do to make it more and more uh, uh, present in our environments? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question. And, um, you know, I was reflecting on a, a great book called The Fearless Organization. And it really talks about fearless means being okay with who you are and creating an environment where people feel okay with who they are. All too often, I think, um, I think when people come into the office in the morning, I know it was true for me for a long part of my career, they put their mask on before they get out of the car, before they walk in the door. And, and that mask isn't always certainly making sure that your hair is good if you had hair <laughs> um, um, or that your attire was fine or you look good. The mask is shielding yourself from all the stuff that you, you had before you came into the office, perhaps dealing with... Uh, a special needs child, um, you know, a sick mom or dad, um, bad relationships, previous trauma. Um, you're trying to go to school at night so that you can advance your career, but you're tired or you have some other health issue. 
I think all too often we don't understand that people bring so much to the office and that behind that mask may be a lot of things that you, in stories, you're not fully aware of. Psychological safety allows that person to not necessarily unwind, but not carry the burden of having that mask on all day, every day. That is really, really hard. But people also need the room to be who they are. I, I will tell you, being tall, I, I found myself in my career actually trying to make myself smaller um, to hide um, because I didn't feel comfortable sometimes, even when I walked in rooms. Um, but I had leaders who actually called on me um, and really wanted to know my opinion, um, who would ask me why, you know, I didn't smile enough or, or may even suspect or sense that there was some other issue that uh, perhaps I was challenged by and allow me to be vulnerable. So I think psychological safety not only leads to productivity and innovation, but as Donnie mentioned, it really taps that potential to say, it's okay to be who you are. In fact, we need you to be your most authentic self. That's how we get the most out of people and we get the most diverse thoughts. We get the best ideas. We get the best out of every human and they're lighter for it. They're not carrying the professional persona and the personal one all at the same time. And what we've learned from our teams is we help the professional, but we also help the personal. If you're having trouble at home, we all want to help you there as well. So it's, um, it's all about making better teams, better employees. Um, and I think psychological safety is, is, is critical. It's necessary if you really want to be innovative, but more importantly, if you really want inclusion. No, that's excellent. This analogy you speak about the mask, mm -hmm. I reflect that most time it's not only a mask, but it's a mask of a superhero or yeah. superheroine. Yeah. So if you think about the past, that's what we were encouraging and promoting. And I think that more and more what we share with our team is about this psychological environment, place you one day to be that no one here is a superhero or superheroine, that we are humans, that we are not at our best self every time. We are going to have our good days or bad days. Uh, what is important is that you have a support network at home, at the work, that once you're not your best, someone can be for you and vice versa. Yeah. And in the end, we need to be our best as a team, not as individuals. And how do you feel that, Dani? No, I think it's 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 truly important, and I think it's it's important as well to make sure that. Um, and we were talking this this morning with the team that we have each other's back, right? And as leaders, that is much power in being vulnerable, right? Because sometimes our people think we are superheroes, right? Because we are in this position and we are not, right? So certain days I wake up and I have a little baby. She's two years old and we uh, made company to each other the whole night or a good parts of the night. But then I have that 7 a.m. A Zoom call in the morning, right? And you needed to be there and you needed to make sure you help the team. So, and, and, and in the past, we thought we need to be there like nothing happened the whole night, right? Um, thanks God we are in an organization now where I can be there and say, guys, difficult day for me. I'm really tired. It was a rough night. And they all know my baby girl because sometimes it's, she's in his own calls with me. And I said, I made the least company a good part of the night. So, um, I'm sorry if I look tired, but I am fully present here with you guys. There is power in that mm. because some of them, and I don't know, they might have a sick child is out at home and they thought the same. I need you to be right, um, pretending nothing is going on when I am truly concerned, right? Uh, that allows them, for instance, to raise their hands. I'm sorry if I need to look at my phone, but I need to make sure my kids who is sick at home, it's okay. And that's amazing that they feel like they can share that with us. So I think it starts with us to make sure everybody in our team understand that we are vulnerable as well. We have issues as well. That opens the door for them to also be okay, not being okay. And that brings a sense of let's have each other's back. And I really feel like my team has my back. 
on those days where I am not like my uh, stronger self. And, I, and they know I have their backs uh, as well. So I think that's what we foster when we have such an environment. Uh, excellent. And, uh, and Larry, sorry, I need to talk about that. I'm a huge, huge basketball fan. And, and I learned that your son was a champion in the NBA league. Yes. And obviously, what an amazing, let's say, opportunity to give him to unleash his entire potential. Mm -hmm. So, beating, uh, all, you are a trailblazer, you give the opportunities for, for your kids. And what should you do for everyone to be able to maximize his entire potential, yeah. as you've seen your kid doing? Yeah. And I have kids myself, that's the thing that I want the most for them. Yeah, I, that, it's a great question. And when I reflect on even his current career, moving from playing to coaching, uh, we, we talk a lot and I have so many stories to share, um, which were always like positive. Um, it's, it's really a matter of what we call grit. Um, it is really expected, sometimes easy just to quit. Um, physically you're tired, mentally you're exhausted. Um, there's great competition out there. Sometimes you doubt yourself. You go through these opportunities around psychological ups and downs. Am I good enough? Who's better? And, you know, the one thing I appreciate about our relationship is that it's, it's, it's very pure. If I have no issues in telling him, like, you really stunk it up tonight <laughs> or you're not working hard enough. And we had just one rule um, that he really, really lit by, which was there'll be nights, there'll be days, there'll be practices where you can't make a shot. There'll be days where everything seems to go wrong. There'll be days where a coach will scream and yell at you. There'll be days when you look at the stands and the fans will boo you and all those things will happen. But there should be no day that you're not the hardest working player on the court. You outwork everyone. Yeah, you may miss shots. You may not play well, but playing hard, that's something everyone can do. And you can measure yourself by how well and how hard you're playing. Um, just by who you're playing against. And I, I, being a former athlete, my college roommate and, um, and best friend at the time, he passed away. We just had this saying, which we applied to both our professions, is that when your career is over and you decide you want to do something else, that you know you've worked so hard and you left it all on the court that you have no regrets, that going back to our conversation around potential, you don't feel like you left something out there that you've exhausted all your potential and maybe no, you're not the best player ever. You may not even be the best player on the team, but you've maximized your potential and there's no gray area to say, gee, I wish I could have worked a little bit harder or I could have done this, I could have done that. No. Um, and I think even now as he's going into coaching, it's just a transfer, not of just skills, but a work ethic and a level of grit to say, I'm probably not going to be the best coach, but I'm going to be the best version of myself. And that takes a lot of resilience because your mind starts playing tricks on you. Oh, you're not good enough. This person's better. Um, no, just be the best you can be and everything else will take care of itself. So, yeah, that's that's I got some great stories. Maybe another podcast I'll share if he lets me. <laughs> oh, we need to have a series of podcasts with you. <laughs> yeah, and, and Danny, and, and for your small babies, so what are you thinking about how to help them to unleash their entire potential? Uh, I have two boys and one girl. Uh, and I think um, what Larry said, it's uh, the most important thing. They are also the older ones. They are starting in sports and also um, just, you know, going to school. It's very competitive. They go to school in the... United States and uh, what I always tell them is that like I, I am not as concerned with the outcome but I am very keen on how much effort you are you know making um, so first thing is school so they know school comes first I, I truly believe in education education transformed my life and I believe it's the only way right for you to fulfill your dreams so uh, we are very serious about that. So education first. And if you are doing good, you can do the other things, uh, which are basically sports and video games for them. 
Uh, so then sports, right? Um, it's, it's extremely competitive sports in the United States. I was like, surprised because here they go to practice and it's it's more like a, sh a social event not there it's like they are all being prepared to go to super bowl <laughs> and i am like okay so but it's good it's good because it helps them to develop leadership it helps them to develop grit right resilience so i also tell them do you want to do this you do it right you put the time you put the effort you might you might not be like the best one there but um, you are going to get out of the practice or game knowing you did your best and you are going to feel good about that. So that's what we, we do as well. But they are still uh, young, but I hope that those things that they are learning and practicing, um, they are going to take with them uh, for life. Uh, so that's my, my hope for them. No accident. I'm loving our conversation, but unfortunately we need to close it. So I just want to listen from you some advice in book. I don't know if you read the uh, advance of yours and some final closing about those who are listening to us that are really willing to break barriers, unleash their potential and be visible. Yeah, actually, um, there's a book I'm reading for the second time. It, it's, it's called The Power of Letting Go. And it actually was not a purposeful read in the beginning. It was, hey, this sounds kind of cool let me just pick it up and and uh the book actually really transformed me in a lot of ways and the book really is concerning um how to let go of things like your own biases the stories you tell yourself uh how to let go of worrying about what happened yesterday and still thinking about the future being mindful of what you can do today um and and letting go of the things that quite frankly you cannot control um, and, and the power of letting go really frees you to be very thoughtful and mindful of the current moment and, and actually love the moment that you're in right now. And, and unfortunately, if you love yesterday and tomorrow, you miss out on today. And there are so many stories and proverbs in, in the reading. It's extraordinary. It comes with a workbook, and my wife is is really tired of me talking about this book <laughs> because I apply the principles at home. And um, but every day, literally, is a new day. Um, and sometimes in corporate America and work, we time passes and we, we miss the day, and we wake up and we work and we go back to sleep. And some of us don't even remember what we did that day. They just know it was a tough week. Um, for me, it's learning to be mindful of literally every moment, every meeting, every person I interact with, be engaged right there. And that, that takes practice. Um, so it's a great book. It's a great read. I'd highly recommend it. I'm going through it the second time. Um, and uh, it's, it's definitely a great reference. Excellent. It's already my list. <laughs> and for sure, this day is not a wasted day. I'm loving the learnings from, from our conversation here. A and you, Danny. Very good, I took notes as well. So for me, since we were talking about, you know, diversity, women leadership, I really recommend, it's not a new book, but for me, it's still the most impactful book on this topic. It's Lean In. Uh, it's from Sheryl Sandberg. She uh, is the former COO from Facebook. And she wrote this book, which for me was like, I, 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 I was experiencing some things in the workplace or in my career journey, and I couldn't name them, right? And when I was reading the book, I was like recognizing situations, recognizing, you know, what was going on. And it's important because then you understand that it's not only happening to you, right? And that you, you have a role in changing that. So it's very powerful. She brings a lot of data. She brings research, but she brings also personal experiences. So I would recommend for everybody, being a woman, being a man, uh, but definitely for women that, you know, you want to lead, I would recommend that you read this book. Um, it was really transformative for me. So lean in. Lean in. Uh, excellent. Well, my, uh, I'm going to talk more about experience rather than a book. Uh, something that I learned is that the more we go out of our bubble, more uh, we are able to really create impact, learn. So in the beginning of this year, I had the opportunity to go to the northeast of Brazil, to Mossoró, 
to be together with Operation Smile in a mission and was totally, let's say, a uh, 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 transformative experience for me to learn about the world and being able to connect my world with that world so we can build something different that help those children that and adults that need so much. Yes. So I really encourage everyone to understand we live in bubbles and we need to make movements outside the bubbles if you really want to maximize our potentials and be more open to diversity and, and inclusion. And well, with that, I hope you like as much as I did this episode. I really think that many of the issues you have in our future, we can overcome if we can work to unleash the potential that is in our populations, in our talents. And I think it is a duty of all of us as leaders to help to remove those structural barriers and as individuals to work to remove those ones that are self-inflicted. So have a great day and thank you for listening to us.